This was upwards is for a blessing for the rain, downwards is a blessing for the tal, for the dew, and the four directions, north, south, east, and west, is for the four winds. We're talking about the wheat harvest here. We're talking about a society which was centered around agriculture. So it was very important to have a blessed year in the agriculture. So the Hanafa, the waving of the loaves, just as the waving of the lulav and etrog, was for a blessing for the agriculture. The next bread we're going to explore is called the Korban Toda. The Korban Toda is the Thanksgiving offering and it was brought by four categories of people. The first category was someone who went on a long sea voyage and he returned safely. He had to bring a Thanksgiving offering to thank, thank Hashem for returning safely. Someone who went on a journey in the desert and returned safely, he also had to bring a Korban Toda. Someone who was ill, was sick and recovered from his illness or someone who gave ch uh, birth, ch childbirth and recovered and was Peseda, they also had to give a korban to that. Someone who was in prison, in a prison or was a slave and he was free, he had to thank God and bring a korban to that. These are the four categories of people. Now the korban to that had a number of breads and in order to give you an idea of what we're talking about, I need some volunteers to help you. See here in front of you, this is the korban to that. There were 40 breads in the korban to that. Four different types of breads, each one there were ten of each. Wow. Now you read about the Korban Toda, but until you actually see it with your own eyes, you don't realize how much bread we're talking about. There's a ton of bread. Okay? One offering. One, one person. One. 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 There were ten of these. So then the rest of the breads were from different kinds of matzahs. The first kind of matzah was called a rakik or rakikin. It was a very thin Matz type of bread, a wafer thin bread, and that's what it looked like. They were round. Square matz was only emerged at the beginning of the 19, 1900s. Until then, all matzahs were round. Handmade matzahs were round. The next bread is also a matzah, but it's much thicker in size, the thickness of a finger. It looked more like a pita. This was called a chalat matzah. Okay, there were 10 of these as well. Also without uh, also without shmari, without uh, because a matzah was not a uh, mixture. The last one is also like a chalat matzah. It also has the thickness of a finger. But the method of preparation of this bread is really interesting. First, it was boiled in water. It was called chalita. Then it was baked in an oven after it was boiled, very much like a bagel. And then after it was baked in the oven, it was fried in oil. So you had boiling, baking, and frying all wow. on the same bread. Wow. It was called lechem murbechet. That was the name of the bread. Lechem rubucha or lechem murbechet. That's what it looks like. Wow. Now, we already made two of the chametz loaves. We're not going to do that again. What we are going to do now is we're going to make the three different kinds of matzahs. Okay, you're a second on the right. On the left, sorry. Second, second on, on the, the left. left. Take the back so you can put it in later. Okay. How long is it boiled for? Well, it's for about a minute just to gelatinize the surface of the bread. Okay, now this one's going to be too big. Oh, look at Corey's. Beautiful. In addition to the breads, there was also two sheep that they slaughtered. So there was meat as well, meat and bread. It was absolutely impossible for one person to eat this quantity of bread. And a lot of people could participate in this feast, and they could hear about the guy with his story and his miracle that happened to him, and that way they published, publicized the miracle. That was the purpose of the bread. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making one dough. I'm going to be mixing it in my mixer in the bakery, and you're welcome to come watch how we do that. Okay, now we're going to switch it over to the second speed, which is a little bit faster. Oh, it is so good. Oh. Oh. Well, there'll be mixers in the bacon and grab the fishing. 
Okay. And Why not? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bracha and I'm going to be yotze on all the other breads that we made with this bracha. So if anyone would like to say it together with me, you're welcome. So you take about a size of an egg, just a little bit under the size of an egg. Baruch Hata Adonai Elohim Melech Haolam Hashem Mikishanu B'Mitzvotav Etzivanu Lafrish Chala Min Ha'Isa. Harezu Chala. Then you wrap it up. Now, in the time of the Beit Hamikdash, you know what they used to do with this piece of dough? They used to give this to the Kohen. The Kohen didn't make his own bread to eat. Bnei Yisrael used to make the bread and give him. A, a portion of the bread that is called Hafashat Chala, and that's what, what the coin's bread used to be. This is the shape of the Teva Kutsa, this is the un upside down head shape. And the way we're going to use it is we're going to lay it upside down to begin with, like that. Can you weigh it? I weighed it all together on the other side. <laughs> then we have these flaps that go on either end, like this. Take this dough and we need to roll it out into the same size that he's sponge. Ten fucking long by five fucking wide. Now remember that this bread had to be made within 18 minutes, so this was really intensive work. The Kohanim used to bake them two at a time, make dough for two of them, roll it out and bake it, and then we start with the next two until they had the whole set of 12 complete. The baking was done every Friday. In the Beit Hamidash, in the Shkat Lechem Achamit. And the breads were then taken out of the oven and left on golden trays until Shabbat morning, where they were taken inside to the Hechal, and they replaced the previous week's breads on the Shulchan. So no one ever ate them? They did eat them. The ones that were removed from the Shulchan from the previous week were then eaten by the Kohanim. After a week? Yeah, they fresh. One of the, there were three miracles that occurred with the Lechem Achamit. The first one that they remained fresh the whole week. Uh -huh. The second miracle, it says in Masechet Chagiga, that they remained hot the whole week, as if they no. just come out of the oven. Uh -huh. wow. And the third miracle, they said each coin got a tiny little piece of Lechem Achamit. There were a lot of coin. They had to distribute the whole, the 12 loaves between a lot of coin. Each one got a tiny little piece, but it was so filling that it filled them up on a tiny little piece. Uh -huh. That was the third miracle so it doesn't rise at all, it's a massive so you shape it, you put it on the pan, you put it straight in the oven and it bakes for about 20 minutes. So matzah is, uh, still can have uh, sodium in it, yeah? It can have the baking soda. The baking that, soda. Okay. So there we go, you bake the pan like this. You know, over here like this, and you can just pull a flap up there like that. If someone will just help you put a thing there to hold it in. And we we'll do the same on the other side like this. Oh, and then you just put a little connector over there. Yeah, you just hold it together. And this goes up like that. Someone helps you put a finger over there. Yeah. Prevent the dough from running out of the side like it is already on the side. Yeah? Well, on the side, what you do is you have a frame that goes over there. Wow. Whoa. Oh, okay. Holy smokes, look at that. That just goes up here. That's a special move. And there you have the one shape of the Teva Kutsa. Now the bread itself weighs five and a half kilo, and the trays weigh another 12 kilos. So this whole thing is about 17 kilos. I'm going to pick it up and see how heavy it is. Quite a, quite a load. Oh my gosh! <laughs> quite a load. That's 17 load. kilos. That's, 17. That's like a secret suitcase. Thank you. The same yeah. principle as the first one. You drape the dough over the first bottom part of the tray. Then you encase it with a cover on top like this. Uh -huh. And then you close it over here. And then you got a frame, frame around it. Wow. Now this That's is the shape of the sweet shed. Now, it's meant to be a V-shape. Now, the reason I didn't make it a V-shape, you have to have a V-shape that each side is five fucking long. If you do that, it doesn't fit in my own. Okay, this is not going in the oven. So, did you get the oven to a certain temperature? Yeah, it has and then to be heated very hot, about 330 degrees Celsius. Okay. It remains more or less. It loses about 20 degrees during the bake. When it's finished, it's going to be about 310. Minus the 
Okay. How long? This now bakes for 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. While it's baking, what we're all going to do now is we're all going to dress up in big day Now we're going to dress up like Kohanim. Oh, wow. And then we're going to go outside. I built a model of the Shulchan with a lechem Kohanim on it. And we're going to all go out dressed as Kohanim. And I'm going to show you the true size models <laughs> of the lechem and the Shulchan lechem Kohanim. And then we get into the entrance of the Echal. The Echal had the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKodeshim. There were two entrances, one on the right and one on the left. They were called Tishpeshim. Tishpesh Yamin, Tishpesh Small. The right-hand entrance is where the Kohanim used to go in and out into the Echal. And no one ever went into the left-hand entrance. The Masal Shim said that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kiv Yachol Ba'at Yitvodol Ba'at Small. He used to enter and leave through the left-hand entrance. Now we're going to go inside the Echal, and you'll be able to see the Shulchan of the Mahani and the Menorah in their true size. Mm. This was over the Ark? This, this was the parochic which separated from the Ark. Beyond this was the Ark. Oh, beyond, beyond this beyond. was the Ark. Okay. Well, is that incense? <clears throat> what is that? Inside, in between the two stacks, there's two little cups of an incense called Levona. So on the altar, when the Kwanim ate the bread on the Shabbat, these cups of the Levona were burnt on the altar, on the Mizbeh. 